Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Imagery construction and upscaling have been a massive part in graphics in the past couple of years or so, but AMD may just be creating a revelation in graphics with FSR2, according to some leaks that have emerged over the past day or two. Long story short, it will apparently achieve better than native image quality and will also run on competitor hardware. And we're going to get right into it after this message from the video sponsor. Did you just build a shiny new PC? Then you'll need a genuine copy of Windows 10 so you can personalize the system and of course get rid of that annoying activation watermark. We've partnered with WhoKeys to give you guys great discounts on Windows 10 keys and of course they can be fully upgraded to Windows 11 too. You can get 30% off using the coupon code RGT during checkout. I've purchased several of these keys in the past using a personal non-RGT affiliated account and they've worked flawlessly with quick delivery. If you want to pick up a copy of Windows for as little as $15 or a cheap and legit copy of Office, check the links out in the video description below. When AMD first launched FSR 1, I think most would agree that while the visual quality wasn't as good as, let's say, DLSS 2.x, in terms of PR, it was a huge win because not only will, of course, it run on Radeon RX 6000 series cards and also AMD's older GPUs, but further to this, it would work on competition hardware. Now, obviously, this is really good at establishing itself with games developers. With this said, um, yeah, I mean, games developers don't have a shortage of ways to go about upscaling i mean ultimately even the ps4 pro had built-in you know checkerboard rendering hardware just simplifying things and to give credit to nvidia they also incorporated well it's gone under a couple of names but currently nis or nvidia image scaling which is basically utilizing elantros filter to my understanding anyway which is pretty much the same algorithm that amd have employed with fsr1 but the landscape is changing significantly as pretty much everyone at this point knows not only is there a ton of competition including intel who are going to be you know really i think competing quite well with xcss when uh, it finally launches and obviously that too will work on competition hardware and also benefits from specific uh, vendor instructions on arc gpus i've actually worked with intel discussing this previously um, so you can check that out uh, you can find it on the channel i've also worked with amd on an fsr video how i discussed the fact it's not just a lancho simple filter for uh, fsr1 so again you can search on the channel for that if you so desire but I think most would agree that FSR1 was a good first step, but we've, of course, been hearing for quite some time of rumors regarding a new version. I mean, let's be honest, there's a reason they called it FSR1 rather than FSR Pinky Promise. This is the final version ever, guys. And myself, multiple times on the channel, I've said that I've been hearing that it's going to not be spatial based anymore, it's probably going to be temporal. And I've been hearing that the image quality is considerably better, like way better. Now, CapFrame X, who creates some really cool benchmarking utilities as well, I'll link their Twitter account, of course, in the video description, has recently tweeted that they've actually seen this running. And there are several highlights that they've mentioned. The first is that they have confirmed that the image quality is jaw-droppingly improved, like much better. And I will say that fsr kind of got a bad rap because one of the things that people were doing is setting it to like the lower quality honestly if it had the higher quality settings it looked fairly decent not as good again as dlss but you know if you're going for like the uh, higher quality settings 4k it looked pretty good at least in my personal opinion although of course it did depend as well on the game and the scene because things can really be kind of hinky on some implementation you know what that's the whole thing but um bottom line visually it's much better interestingly it is temporal based according to what capframe x has said further to this and this is quite interesting it employs some advanced anti-aliasing solutions now the method for upscaling has not been revealed yet and don't forget that pretty soon we're going to see amd talk about this a lot more at the gdc conference now hopefully this crap that's a technical term becomes publicly available i 
really hope so, guys. Like, please, Pinky, please. I'll give you a cookie. I will literally send it to you. Um, I really want to see what they've done. Um, and yeah, basically, it's apparently not utilizing machine learning. And I find that particularly interesting. Now, to be honest, there are a crap ton of different methods that they could employ, but it's idle speculation at the moment on my part because, honestly, we don't know what they're doing. AMD are apparently not doing this, but obviously Intel and NVIDIA are. And apparently it will also work on competitor hardware. Now, I kind of guessed previously that that was the case, but I hadn't heard anything from my sources. I just got told that it, you know, it had a speed up for RDNA 3 is what one person told me. I don't really know how that works, given it's not using machine learning. One thought I did have is it could be some specific instructions, again, like Intel have done. And although it's not the same thing, um, FSR 1 had a fallback layer, so it was no longer using like, half precision operations. It was using full precision if the GPU didn't support it. So that was like FP16. So, for example, um, if it was running on Vega, great, good to go. But if it was running on like an older AMD GPU, like I don't think Polaris... I don't think Polaris has FP... No, it doesn't have FP16, does it? Polaris. No, I don't think it does. No, it doesn't have FP16, half precision. Um, because that was introduced with Vega, with rapid pattern math. So, yeah. So, if it was running on, like, an RX 480, it would be um, full precision. And, of course, if it was running on something like, I don't know, a GTX 980, it would be the same thing as well. So, yeah, it, it's kind of interesting that we're, see that we're seeing this. And, honestly... I'm going to be super curious how all of this ends up, like, in terms of, you know, the upscaling war. Because what AMD have publicly said is that RSR is basically, you know, it's basically um, FSR. So many different acronyms, bloody hell. So many different acronyms. But uh, basically, RSR is FSR built into the drivers. Um, and this is essentially like NVIDIA's NIS. So it's a spatial solution, but it's pretty much like a driver toggle, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm going to guess, and this is not, I really want to stress, this is not, guys, this is not based upon a leak. This is just me guessing. But when I was leaking about um, FSR2, I was also hearing a lot about DLSS3. And one of the things I was hearing about DLSS3, and this is from sources this bit, is it had major improvements on ray tracing performance. Um, I heard that, I don't remember the percentages are offhand, you can check out my old video, but I heard that, you know, percentage-wise, uh, ray tracing elements of a scene were much faster. And I don't know exactly how it did that. I don't know if it's similar to the, uh, you know, research that Sony have done, um, you know, which we discussed recently in the PS5 Pro thing. But either way, doesn't really matter. It's quite interesting. I really wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA in the longer term makes some pretty big further announcements of DLSS 3. For example, the fact it's some type of driver toggle. I don't honestly know how they would do that. But, I mean, I, I just feel that NVIDIA are going to be doing a lot in the future. Like, all I'm hearing is that they're doubling, tripling, quadrupling, like, like, they're doing everything down on DLSS, and obviously they do not want AMD or Intel to come in and just be like, yoink, we're grabbing that, because, well, let's just face it, it's a really big, it's a really big reason to buy an RTX card, and I think, you know, we'll talk more about RTX 40 in just a moment, but I'm hearing really good things about next generation cards. And obviously, we've talked about the performance a ton. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, being able to generate an image from a lower input, you know, high quality image, excuse me, from a lower input is going to be paramount. It's going to be critical. It's going to be the linchpin of not just like, it's because it's all well and good for people who buy like, um, I don't know, like, okay, this is here. Like, uh, what is this one? Um, oh yeah, so I'm, I've been screwing around at the moment doing some benchmarking, so I'm like taking cards and everything out. But this is like a all right, RTX uh, 3080 Ti keeps spinning it. But yeah, it's all well and good for like, you know, people who have something like this. I have no idea if we've got a lowering card. Have we got a lowering card around? Uh, yes. Ow. 
is what's this one this is like a 30 50. so a lot of people are going to be running something like this and it's still a really good card you know like a 30 50 or a 30 60 or i guess next generation it's going to be like a 40 50 or 40 60 or you know an rx 7000 whatever but you know most people are going to be running something like that and so upscaling becomes even more important because you know dropping like a thousand two thousand bucks on a graphics card it's not something that a lot of people can do but further to this re you know reconstructing the image in terms of power utilization is incredibly important because things like you know mobile um you know mobile phones for example that's a really easy one but even things like laptops like <laughs> you know uh i don't have a nuclear power plant in my back pocket it'd be pretty sweet if i did but at the moment i don't so until i get like an arc reactor in my chest i'm probably gonna say that you know re it basically it's just going to benefit the entire suite of uses and of course with laptops as well you also have other things like um being able to really kind of do some really cool stuff with uh, apus and amd and intel are doing a lot with their apus you know it'll be really interesting i think to see what happens over the next couple of years with that and now we're going to move on to power consumption. I'm holding the RTX 3080 Ti here because it's a substitute for the RTX 40 cards. Yeah, the rumor is that we're going to be seeing models of over 600 watts power consumption. And this comes to us not just from Grayman, but also Kobe D7 Kimmy. And I think it's fine. I mean, it's fine. What's wrong with, what's wrong with 600 watts? It's fine. Wait, what, what's, this, what's this one? This is, this is 850 watts. So if it's 600 watts, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It gives me 250 watts headroom. So if I'm running like 12, a 12, 900 K, that's, that's, it's, it's, it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Being serious just for a moment, guys, I'm actually testing out the RX um, 850X here. It's uh, been sent over by Corsair. And I actually got, I actually bought the 1000 watt variant of this. Um, but uh, I'm testing out some stuff at the moment, some memory and uh, kind of other bits regarding Alder Lake, and I'm really liking the PSU at the moment, but I'm kind of swapping motherboards and doing a bit of a teardown, so there'll be some content on that soon. But, yeah, so both Kobe D7 Kimmy and Grumman are saying that they've been hearing confirmation now of 600 watt variants. Now, I have covered this topic kind of before, and I've mentioned that one of my sources has said that there are actually variants which go up to 800 watts. However, from what I understood at that point, they are like, you know, like the, the Hydro Kingpin gives you, you know, a back massage that day version. They're the really like high-end overclocked variants. And I've been getting mixed messages, honestly, whether the founds edition cards like the reference power, you know, because at the end of the day, the ones that are like, you know, called by, you know, arctic winds and require a super massive black hole to you know those custom versions are like they're great but i'm more interested in the reference design and i've been personally hearing some very conflicting information of what exactly they are now what i can say and i've mentioned multiple times on the channel previously is that i've heard at least 550 watts for you know the rtx 4080 and possibly 4090s like 500 to 550 watts i've mentioned that several times on the channel what i had heard is that they were around 100 watts lower but basically nave 3x pretty much caused nvidia to push the power envelope to the stratosphere um and again i've mentioned this in a couple of videos previously and um i don't think there's any real like cause for concern in that you know the the cards are going to blow up or anything like that presumably they're going to be okay to be cooled i'm really curious to see what the <laughs> what the cooling solutions are going to be like what i have also heard is it's not like nave is going to be slip uh, sipping i was going to say slipping sipping power um i've heard that you know they're going to be pretty damn power hungry as well uh, however with Nave 31, which are the flagship models, from what I understand anyway, the reference design 
uh, power figures are a little all over the place here but i've heard i'm just going to say average around 375 watts i've heard a little higher i've heard a little lower so i'm just going to say 375 but what i have also discussed multiple times of course is that some variants could go up to like 450 watts so nvidia are definitely going to be hungrier like even if it's only like 550 i say eve only only 550 watts um but again neither amd or nvidia are exactly what you could call energy you know energy conservation and unfortunately this is just kind of the nature of things like if you look at rdna um rdna2 to rdna3 um, i'm sorry rdna1 to rdna2 god i can't speak suddenly um sure there were some improvements you know in the actual architecture in terms of features for example they added in you know like ray tracing and all that but there were also a crap ton of other improvements that of course they made to the silicon um and a lot of those were for example for energy efficiency running at higher clock frequencies all of that jazz and a lot of those like improvements were very very important and we can presume that despite the fact they're going from the um 7nm to the 5nm processor from tsmc they're also going to have to do a crap ton of stuff to just make the best out of this power consumption i'm going to be really interested to see what rtx 40 and rdna3 are actually capable of because i'm hearing really insane things like i've been hearing a lot of games can run at like 4k 120 hertz um, and that could be with ray tracing now the only thing i'm not certain about is whether that's with dlss i don't think it is um and honestly you could kind of you could kind of understand it like again rdna3 the performance targets apparently are like three times more in terms of t-flops and games apparently it's around two and a half to three times faster um i'm hearing it could be three times with ray tracing and probably standard raster around two and a half but either way no matter which way you slice it it doesn't matter like if you're getting like 70 or 80 frames a second in games at the moment like just imagine what you'll be getting in titles you know 4k the thing is obviously they're just going to be like well basically you know get that arc reactor installed with that said um i think that's just about it for this video um i've kind of waffled on a bit too long <laughs> but it is what it is thank you very much for watching and if you, of course, enjoyed my waffling, make sure to subscribe and uh, leave a likey on the video. Take care of yourselves, guys. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.